All right, so this is my ardent, well, um, this is my inscription of Insight Control Deck. Obviously, I use ardent elements, element, uh, elementalists to uh, reuse inscription of Insight, which has three effects, which gives me variety. Um, also, it also gives me the ability to, uh, you know, uh, play the kicker cost, so it, it's, it, it'll cost eight to play altogether. The kicker cost, and you get all three effects. I'll see if. Okay, so the first thing you, you saw there is obviously that's uh, Alron's uh, epiphany. I obviously uh, foretold it, so obviously I'm I'm preparing it for later on. So the idea is obviously as soon as you can do this, as soon as you want to. I want to do this first, you know, set that up, and then in my hand you would notice that I have Maiden, not, not Maiden, Maddening, something, whatever, it has Jace on it, and the whole point is that it's a card that if you, if you don't use, um, kick it, um, your opponent uh, mills the top eight cards of their deck, which is really good against any deck. This is definitely a good card to use in, in, in any blue, blue deck, blue control, or just blue in general. If you could take it in at all, it's a good card because of the fact that Milling eight cards off the top of your opponent's deck off of one card is powerful for two mana. And then if you kick it and pay six to play it, right, you cut your opponent's deck in half. So if they have a 30 card deck, they just lost 15 cards, right? If they have a 40 card deck, they just lost 20 cards. And that can hurt many, many decks. So there's a lot of decks that need certain combo pieces or they, they, they play cards to search cards. So you milling them, it's going to make it really hard for them to get uh, those, uh, important cards they need. Sometimes they tech cards in, right? Sometimes they'll, they'll have like one or two copies of certain cards. So you milling them, you know, drastically reduces their chances of being able to use those cards in any shape, way, or form. So unless those cards have flashbacks, <laughs> you're not going to see them anytime soon. So um, obviously milling is good against any deck except like a graveyard deck that does have Disturb, Flashback, Entomb, uh, and the list goes on, or Reanimation there. You know, the list goes on of, of decks that, um, this, you know, Milling would be bad against, but on average, I'll say 80% of decks will drastically get uh, crushed by by this effect. And again, two mana right off the bat just to, just to get rid of eight cards. Too good. And then six then six just to cut their deck in half. Too good. After you get them down to um, like like once they're down to like <clears throat> like 30, 30, 30 cards in their deck, then hit them with with one with the card right. Cut their deck in half so they'll go from thirty to fifteen. And after that, just playing um, maddening twice. Remember eight for each copy. Playing maddening twice after that just for two mana. We'll, we'll, we'll mill them 8 and 8, which is 16. 16, you know, is higher than 15, right? So, that's that's a, that's a strategy. You, you want to get them down to um, their deck down to less than than uh, than 40, obviously, right? Because uh, if they're down, let's say they're 40 and you cut their deck in half, so they're down to 20. Which means you'll have to play the card three more times, only doing 8. Or, you cut the you cut the deck in half from from forty to twenty. Cut it again to go from twenty to ten, and then hit them um, for eight. So like it, it depends on the situation on how you want to do it. But um, I was in a scenario where my opponent had thirty. I cut the deck in half. Now it's like all right, cool. Now all I have to do is hit them twice with the card, and you know I go for game. And yeah. So that was cool. Um, let's keep going. Just wanted to talk about that stuff. Like why it's in there, why I use it. We have other cards in here, obviously. But see, turn three, I'm already going maddening. So I'm already, so that's eight out of the deck. And he scoops. So you automatically win just by playing the card. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? <laughs> Most decks can't handle that card. And it's a basic card, like. You know what I mean? Like low cost and everything. 
we're here enjoying some theme music. Let's try to speed that up. Sorry for the extra distraction on the side. Let's see, guys. Right, so here's some gameplay. All right, so um, you notice the color is red, white, and blue. America, right? Represent the three colors. Yeah, this that card is a problem. If I'm right, yeah, I lose that. I lose that match <sighs> because he's um, because I, I yeah I lost that match because I, I misplayed. <clears throat> I had the ability to block it, that the two one right there, but I didn't realize that I could. I thought I couldn't because the whole entire game, as you'll see, he keeps attacking me and he's unblockable. But I didn't read his effect. I just thought he would, he just automatically was unblockable. <clears throat> if I read his effect, I would have realized that only when it attacks by itself it's unblockable. Other than that, I can block it. There was a moment where it attack with another creature and I actually had the ability to block and kill it so ended up killing my you know losing because of that so, you know misplaced happens Just gotta pay attention more like I said you know I didn't really read the card if I read the card I would have would have planned for it I just thought I was on block one I just dealt with it um obviously I got rid of an artifact <laughs> Better safe than sorry. Didn't really know much what it did. I just checked it to see what it did. It's like okay. And then he plays that artifact. I'm like, yeah, that's the artifact I want to hit. Um, so I take this hit. Obviously, couldn't stop it. It's unblockable. He's adventuring into the dungeon. So that's two and all. all right, let's try to skip some steps. All right, so I blink. Right. So I get rid of the wood um, artifact because I use my uh, teleportation circle to blink out my um, thundering um, barbarian. So now, so barbarian has one of two abilities: either I destroy an artifact, or I uh, create a uh, um, a treasure token. Of course, this is I, I mainly use this as a uh, mana engine, you know, to make the to treasure token so I can use it for mana, so I can play my uh, all runs epiphany sooner than later and you see i have one already foretold and one currently in my hand so you definitely want to play these back to back you want to play these um turn you know turn after turn so when you get the extra turn from the first copy you want to get another turn from the second copy so you see i'm definitely trying to set up and you see i have inscription in my hand i can play inscription for four i can board wipe which um ironically i should have done that was a misplay. That's the first misplay right there. Um, I went to foretold because I want to be able to play these back to back later on. So, thinking, I think what happened here was it, it gave me the impression that I could have played it, but I couldn't play it. I don't have enough to, to play it. I have 25 mana. So then I'm thinking. Of doing this, this too made me th again hate when it shows you the that you have the option, you have the ability to do stuff. Let me skip through real quick. Okay, so I used it to balance the token and that back to the hand to so get them out the way. So it resets them, which wasn't a bad play in that part. And then flash, and then try to get the token this time. Get the token. Ironically, I could have destroyed his token, which probably would have been a good idea considering the fact that he seems to be low on mana. I have way more mana than he does. Oh no, he has five. He's good. I thought I had more mana than him. I thought he had like three mana. I'm like, hey, he got mana too. No, he got he's six plus that. He's at seven. He plays that again. <coughs> all right. So, oh, of course, me ramping up is important so that I can use my all rounds ability. I want to be able to play them back to back, and we see, as you can see, I have um, uh, burned down the house that can uh, obviously board wipe, <clears throat> which is what I should have done instead of the uh, the inscription because I don't really need my plunder guy that bad. He's a good card, don't get me wrong, but I didn't need him that bad. Ardent uh, elements is a way more important card. 
Um, but you see how I take the extra turn using the token. So I get I get the birds. That's the most important part. Not only getting an extra turn, but also getting you know some 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 blockers slash attackers, depending on how I want to use them. Obviously, all Ron's epiphany is so strong it, it, it has to exile itself after you use it so i'll put it away you know get it i say that for next turn this turn i can ramp and get me two treasure tokens so make one and then at the end of my turn i can blink and make another one of course i can attack if i want but if i might i don't, I, I just keep them blockers so i'm just trying to i'm trying i'm just trying to get extra turns so i can get more lands and start, you know, getting my little engines up and running. Because I'm trying to get my ardent elements on uh, my ardent element uh, elementalists on the field, and you know, start with you know, um, and start my engine of playing um, inscription over and over and over, which will allow me to clear his board right, bounce things back to his hands. But you see, this freaking card here is in the way. See, what I have on the board is it's not that important. I should board wipe, but I wasn't thinking that. I'm, I'm just um, trying to do everything else I got, trying to do some damage. Because right here, you know, obviously I could just attack, get some damage in, and then board wipe. Which I'm thinking, did I do that? Did I? Or did I make tokens? No, I did. Oh, he had the, the counter. Yeah, I did try to board wipe. That's what it was. Because I was expecting him to counter it, because I'm you know, obviously going to pick a blue deck, so I was expecting him to counter, which he does. There it is, see? I didn't want him to counter my uh, uh, epiphany. <laughs> so that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to outplay. I was waiting for him to tap out, to stop to, you know, to stop having blue mana up, right? So that way I can... So there I go, making more tokens, you know, more treasures, I mean, so that way I can have more than enough energy to play more than one card because again when you're going because they control deck right they can counter and they can count and sometimes they can only count on once per turn so you want to play something you want them to counter then play something that you know you don't want them to counter so you have to outplay them you know how smart a counter player because they're waiting for you to play your best cards and then counter it sometimes they like i wouldn't be surprised if my opponent uh after countering my board wipe they were like ah good he has, I got rid of his board wipe. I have nothing to fear. So then a lot of times they would tap out because they thought that they avoided the worst. But look, see, I just drew another burning down the house. Here's another chance of um, board wiping. And he might counter. So I'm going, so this time I go for the attack if I'm right, and then the board wipe. I'm trying to see what he's going to do. Um, he starts pumping up his creature if I'm right. Try to see how it skips up a couple steps because opponents tend to be slow sometimes on their actions. And for my, let's see, yeah, I go for the board wipe. See, he has the counter. Trying to bait out because he has two cards in hand. See, there it goes. See, saw it coming. He saw it coming. All right. So, I still have, um, man, you know, those tokens. Like I said, you have to outplay your opponent. So, I was able to play this, which. <clears throat> gives me something I can block with, and then I'll have an attacker because I get a token, and then I'll blink him and get another um, token. That way I have, you know, stuff I can attack my opponent with. Trying to build up, obviously, to my extra turn, my epiphany turn, so I can get the extra turn. He has two cards in his hands. I have three cards in my hand. So he pumps that thing up and has flying, so good thing I have my flyer. Uh, but I'm thinking, I think he does something to get rid of my fire, so I will end up taking four damage. No, no, I do, uh, no, I block, that's what happens. He attacks and I block. See, I block that, boom, boom, boom. So six scope damage goes through. Scries. That would have been devastating if that was like a burn effect. Alright, so he's tapped out. You see, he's finally tapped out, like, right? Finally, he's tapped out. 
which is what I'm waiting this whole time. And now I can epiphany, get the birds, right? Get the extra time. And since he's tapped out of attackers, I can take advantage of attack. Boom, 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 boom. Since the, since the, the tokens aren't, aren't, the decay token and the zombies aren't useful for blocking, gotta deal some damage. All right. So then I get another turn. Now here I can play Ardent, right, and get a sorcery. Um, left and right. Which one did I get? Oh yeah, because I can get both sorceries. So I end up getting both because I have my blink effect. So I grab the board wipe, but then I think, you know, oh, I was going to attack. I was like, no, no, got to defend. That's one of the things you want to do is defend. Now I'm going to do and get my other card. I'm going to get my inscription because this is the inscription of site control deck. So get that stuff back. <sighs> so he plays that. That's good. Cause that's trash, <laughs> right? He can't attack. So I have nothing to worry about. Now here, right? He gets me. He's like, yep, yeah, he got me. Yep, yeah, got me. <laughs> because you're unblockable. So good for you. Good for you. 